So in this video, we're going to take a look at a new kind of adder. Um, to refresh your memory, we previously saw an adder called a carry ripple adder. And the way that it works is we've got um, a series of full adders all strung together that take in two bits to be added together, as well as a carry in bit. And if you recall from our discussions in class, um, this adder had some delay because it needs to wait for this carry output to be computed and fed into the next adder before it can begin computing the next sum and the next sum and the next sum. Um, so carry ripple adders do work. They work very well. Um, but they are not uh, particularly efficient when it comes to speed uh, performance um, when adding two binary values together. Um, so before we talk about the solution to that problem, let's again refresh our memories as to what a full adder actually looks like. These are the components that are being used in a carry ripple adder. So if we look at what's actually in these full adders, we see I've got two sets of logic. I've got the sum logic over here, and then the carry out logic over here. And so the question becomes, if we want to do this faster, right, since the carry bit is what's slowing us down, is there anything that we can do to make this carry out logic faster? Can we make this carry bit logic faster? And so let's think about what, when a carry bit is actually generated. There are actually two cases when we need uh, a carry bit. So one case is when we actually need to generate the carry bit. If A and B are both true, A and B being our inputs, to be added together. So if they are both true, then I need to generate a carry bit. The way that we can say this using a logic equation is g is equal to a and b. So in this case, 1 and 1 means I need a carry bit. right? The other case is when we need to propagate a carry bit. So we have a carry bit coming in, and we just need to pass it along. And so in that case, we're going to propagate a carry bit if we have a carry in bit and then either A or B is also high, right? So it could be B in the carry bit or A in the carry bit. But in either case, we're just going to be propagating this carry bit to our carry out. So we can actually use these two very simple expressions to help us try to simplify the carry, um, uh, carrying process in our adder and generate what's called a uh, carry lookahead adder. So the way that it works is like this. You'll notice that we are no longer using full adders here full adders are out. Right? Instead, we're using these blocks that compute the sum, as well as g and p, which are those expressions that we just saw on the previous slide. Right? So we're computing sum, g, and p. And now we're, we're using this additional carry, carry look-ahead logic block down here at the bottom in conjunction with g, p, and the carry in bits to help us propagate the carry bits even faster than we could before. So we think about what's going to happen now, right? How is this going to work? Well, we still need to wait for G and P to be computed here. We already have the carry in bit. As soon as we have the carry in bit, right, we can decide whether G and P um, dictate us uh, having a carry out bit, right, into the next adder. But this carry out bit is going to immediately be available for use with the next G and P values and immediately be available again for the next GMP values and the next GMP values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what's the disadvantage of this? The disadvantage is that we have more logic down here in order to pull this off. This is more logic than we have um, with a typical full adder setup. In fact, if we want to compare this block versus the full adder that we had before, this sum G and P block, right? it actually becomes a little bit simpler. None of this stuff on the right-hand side is going to change. Computing the sum is still the same. It's only the carry logic that changes. So now instead of computing carry out, we're actually computing G and P, which is just a few simple gates. We've got A and B, and then we've also got A or B and carry in. So that's what replaces this logic over here. Then we need to think about what this carry look ahead logic is going to look like. right? Either GO or PO need to be high in order for us to generate the next carry bit. Right? So basically, GO or PO generates CO. Right? And then CO is going to be used to compute the next P value. And then C1 will be used to compute the next P value, et cetera, et cetera. So we still do have kind of a rippling effect happening here, but it's going to take place a lot faster. In fact, I'm going to save this question for class, um, but something you can think about between now and then is how much faster does this actually go? 
how much time do we actually save by doing things this way? Um, that's going to be something that we're going to talk about in class. So next time we're going to take a look at another arithmetic operation, one that we haven't really seen yet before. Uh, we're going to take a look at multiplication.